Well, good morning again, dear saints. Great to see you on this wonderful day our Lord has given us, the 9th of January today. The psalm for today, Psalm 62, the New Testament reading, Romans chapter 2, as we continue in this real heavy law section that uh, St. Paul is writing about. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Well, hear the psalm for this morning. For God alone... O my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my salvation and my glory, my mighty rock, my refuge is God. Trust in him at all times, O peoples. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up, they are together lighter than a breath. Put no trust in extortion, set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice I have heard this, that power belongs to God, and that to you, O Lord, belongs steadfast love. For you will render to a man according to his work. This is the word of the Lord. Well, we're going to unpack it in back, uh, backwards from uh, the bottom of the psalm when it says there that uh, to you, o Lord, excuse me, twice I have heard this, that power belongs to God and that to you, O Lord, belongs steadfast love, for you will render to a man according to his work. Our salvation is not because of the things that we do. Remember that. Our salvation is because God loves us. He's forgiven us. And he promises to be with us always. He alone, grace alone, has saved us. But the things we do, the life we live inside of Christ in our baptism is a life that points us to Christ. And others see that. When God sees those things we do, he knows there is salvation there. And is the salvation that saves us. Uh, Right there at the beginning, for God alone, O my soul, wait in silence. Wait for the Lord. Be strong, take heart, let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord, Psalm 27. When we don't see God, he's still there. He's still working. He's still doing all those things that we hope that he will do. Put your trust in him. The psalmist makes something very clear here that, uh, that the highborn, that the wealthy, the lofty, those with a lot of power or influence, as well as the lowly, the poor, those who maybe aren't so well-spoken, they're the same in God's eyes. And as they are the same, that gives us a, a reference point to go forward that all in God's eyes are the same. All are loved the same. All are given the same Jesus. But in times when people reject that, then their salvation or lack of salvation is on them. Not because God loves somebody more, but because they rejected what God has given. The gospel reading for today is going to lean right into that as we look at this. Again, St. Paul, writing to the church in Rome, chapter 2, Paul writes this. Therefore, you have no excuse, O man, every one of you who judges. For in passing judgment on one another, you condemn yourself, because you, the judge, practice the very same things. We know that the judgment of God falls rightly on those who practice such things. Do you suppose, O man, you who judge those who practice such things and yet do them yourself, that you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you presume on the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? But because of your hard and impenitent heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. He will render to each one according to his works. To those who by patient well-doing seek the glory and the... (coughs) Excuse me. 
seek for glory and honor and immortality, we will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, they will be wrath and fury. There will be tribulation and distress for every human being who does evil. The Jew first, and also the Greek. But glory and honor and peace for everyone who does good for the Jew first, and also for the Greek. For God shows no partiality. For all, who, for all have sinned without the law, excuse me, for all who have sinned without the law will also perish without the law. And all who have sinned under the law will be judged by the law. For it is not the hearer of the law who are righteous before God, but the doers of the law who will be justified. For when Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do what the law requires, they are a law to themselves, even though they do not have the law. They show that the works of the law are written on the hearts, while their conscience also bears witness, and their conflicting thoughts accuse or even excuse them. On that day when, according to the gospel, God judges the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. Chapter 2, 1 through 16. Uh, St. Paul, uh, remember in the last chapter, he was really hard on uh, a lot of specific sexual sins. He talked about those things very clearly, that there is no salvation if we continue to are caught up in this and refuse to hear the truth, refuse to believe the truth. We exchange natural things for unnatural. unnatural. We uh, avoid not only God's law, but we don't even pay attention to the laws of nature, the natural law. Well, here, in this chapter, St. Paul, he opens the curtain up and he makes sure that we all know that we're caught in this. He broadens the scope of sin, and that also includes all of us. As Paul writes this, uh, he just lays us all bare. Do you think you can get by with doing a sin that nobody knows about and God won't know about? Even though you condemn somebody for what they do, God knows what you do. Even though you can hide it and you can do things that maybe no one will know what you're doing, God knows. And that doesn't leave us off the hook. Last time when we were talking in chapter 1, Paul was clear to say all unrighteousness, all sin, all idols are condemned by God. And that includes us. Just because we're not like somebody else and doing what they do doesn't mean we're off the hook. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We're going to hear that in chapter 3. And are given righteousness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Gospel in chapter 3. As we go forward in this, there, uh, Paul is very clear that... Um, that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So he says down here, he, he talks about the Jews, that uh, for those who continue to live apart from God's word, they will be condemned. The Jews first, and then the Gentiles. And then he goes on to say that for those who do good and love God, they will be blessed by God. The Jew first, and then the Gentile. In our world today, with the fighting in Israel and Hamas, with that tension that's going on there, uh, our nation, a lot of our friends and family, all have the understanding that we have to help Israel because if we help Israel, God will bless the United States. Something on that order. Dear saints, Israel is, is uh, Israel as far as God's people who he made the promise to through Abraham. They are precious to him, no doubt just like everybody else is. But that does not mean they are more precious than anyone else. Uh, Helping out the nation of Israel today on a political sense means that we continue to love our neighbor and protect our neighbor as we should. But in a sense of if we do this, then God will do that, the scriptures are nowhere near that. That is a false understanding. That is kind of a Zionism that's grown in our culture and in our Christianity. And it's not true. Our Lord loves Israel and he loves Hamas. He loves all people and he wants them to be saved by his word and truth. But Israel has turned their back on God many years ago and Hamas as well. And our prayer is that they would repent. We will not be better off as a country because we help Israel. God will not bless us more because we take Israel's side. 
God blesses those who repent and live in his promises and his peace. Don't be sucked into all the news and this Zionism that's out there. That is not where Paul goes. That is not where God goes. God loves Israel. And when we look at that in light of Jesus and the New Testament, we are. All who believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior, God's promised Messiah, we are Israel today. And because of that, he will bless us. Not just necessarily the people that have that name or follow the bloodline of Abraham. God continues, uh, in, or Paul continues in this chapter to remind us of the law that's written on our hearts. This is the natural law. And one of the problems of chapter 1 that Paul deals with is this, this tendency of homosexuality. And there again, remember, at the center of that is what I want. Well, the natural law of the land, if you just step back from all of religion together and you look back at the land and you look at animals and you look at people, you know that two males don't create people, and two females don't create people, and two male animals or female animals don't create more offspring. The law of nature tells you that the right relationship is man and woman, male and female. And that's the natural law that's in our land. But when people are so blind or deaf that they won't even look at the natural law of things, They are simply going to do what they want. They have become a God to themselves, and that's dangerous. Anytime we have an idol, anytime we have something in in our world that is pulling us to do what I want and not what God wants, we're in danger of falling into that same thing. Uh, Quite a bit of law for us right here in chapter 2 as well. Chapter 3 is a little bit better. There are those hopes and promises in there, and we'll unpack that tomorrow. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When we look at the salvation of all mankind, we have to go back to the second article of the creed. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of his Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood, and with his innocent suffering and death that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Just as he has risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, this is most certainly true. We pray. Father in heaven, we thank you again for all of your good gifts. We thank you, Father, for your law that convicts us all and shows us that, that even in our minds there is sin. We thank you, Father, that you have shown us the gospel, that you have given us Jesus to forgive all of our sins and give us hope and promise. We pray you would continue to repent all people through your spirit, that they might live in your peace. Hear us now as we pray the prayer your Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, dear saints, thanks for joining us today. Join us again tomorrow. Be in God's word. Thanks for watching the devotions. But if you'd like, pick up your Bible and just simply start reading and knowing the truth that God has for us. Go in his peace. Thanks be to God.